Hey everybody, it's your man, the Brick City Monk, Uncle D. Once again, right here. Uh, not sure uh, where this is going to go. <laughs> so, bear with me. It could go off the rails real quick. Um, as always, I was having a conversation with a friend. And um, just a, a, a quick caveat here, maybe. I don't know what triggers y'all because y'all seem triggered by a little bit of everything nowadays so um you know if you're real sensitive about certain things maybe you might want to scroll on by but uh because i'm gonna say something that you're not gonna like definitely i'm gonna say a lot of shit probably that you're not gonna like <laughs> um uh i'm in when I post this video up, of course, obviously I'll put the, the a link to the video where I got these uh, this particular topic that I want to talk about. It's actually a continuation from last week because I don't understand how we don't talk about the truth. The truth is often in our faces and we deny that it is what it is and we give it another name often. And it's weird. Um, so I was listening to a guy on social media talk about you know, the things that are in the news basically today with the stars being arrested and held in prison and things like that. Um, and he said something and it kind of, I, I guess it kind of pulled my spirit a little bit because, yeah, and we do this all the time. We And I've talked about this often because we don't see our role in our own we are complicit in our in our own uh, what's the word oppression. Basically, we we allow people the opportunity to lie to us because we accept things as the lie when it's told to us. We take that narrative and we run with that, um, and we've done it throughout history. We listen to people to say things that aren't true. We listen to a lie in society that black men are violent. We listen to people say that. We listen to cops respond to black men being what they perceive as violent um, and often pay with their lives. And that narrative needs to go away because it is untrue. If there is anybody any group that we can point to and say, you know, that group is violent, it would be a group of people who went to another land, raped, murdered, pillaged, stole, and enslaved people, then brought them to another land, made them lose their culture, their language, often their relatives, their children, and then made them work for free for 400 years. That is, I, I can't think of anything more violent than that. But we think black men are violent. <laughs> we think black people are violent. Or, or we're told. That's the narrative that we, that we go by. Things that, that we just know aren't true. Even down to things like marriage. People have, and, and I don't know if this is something that's said because I am not in uh, the married community, but I don't know if people pass on information in such a way that people think that once you get married, your spouse is going to be faithful and that they're always going to have eyes for you and only you. See, we don't discuss, particularly during an institution of marriage, where it's a legally binding contract that binds you until one of you uh, is deceased or you get a divorce or something. We don't talk about the fact that humans change their minds. People don't always keep the same mindset for 20 and 30 years that they had when they got married. So if you don't have the same mindset, you might not even like the same type of people that you're married to in a few years. Did anybody ever have that conversation with you before you got married? No, because they want you to believe that marriage is going to fix it. They want you to believe the fairy tale. They want you to believe that if your man has been, you know, uh, swashbuckling and he hasn't 
buckled himself down with you after a certain amount of time and you get him to say that I do, that everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to, once he says I do, everything is going to be all right. And it's not true. We watch more than 50% of marriages end in divorce every year. For as long as I have been alive, just about. We watch that happen year in. That, again, is the very definition of negligence, to continue to engage in a practice that fails more than 50% of the time. If cars failed 50% of the time, you would not drive a car. You wouldn't. But yet you still believe the fairy tale that marriage is going to make you happy. Nobody's ever discussed with you what happiness is. So you think that the end result of getting married and maybe having two point whatever kids is going to bring about some feeling of euphoria, but nobody tells you what to do once you reach that point. Nobody tells you what to do with those two point whatever children. Nobody tells you what to do with that husband once he has stopped working or is unable to work for some reason or is no longer coming around the house as often as he used to. Nobody tells you what to do during those points. That, that is where we fail people with marriage. We don't pass on the pertinent information. We still let people believe the fairy tale. And then we have people out here going to these shows, and I'm not knocking the show, like tonight's conversation, asking relationship advice about situations when their situation is something that they have created. The answer is you have to clean you up. Period. That's the end of the show. For everybody, I don't care what your situation is that you brought here to this show to get an answer to tonight. The answer is you. And we don't look at us. We hate looking at us. We hate the responsibility of our own lives. So we believe in God. I'm not saying there's not a power bigger than us. This, this, I believe that we're just another level on, you know, an ever evolving, descending and ascending level. Uh, but we need to believe in something because we don't want the responsibility of taking care of our own lives. Or that responsibility has been absconded from us in a way and we don't know how to, we aren't making as much progress getting it back. But we have to stop believing these things. Um, they just don't even sound right. They don't even, they don't even fit right in your spirit when you hear them. When I was a little kid and I heard in church, you know, that you have to honor your mother and your father. The first thing I thought was why? That makes absolutely no sense to me. As a little kid, I thought this. I'm like, why would you honor your parents? Not that you shouldn't respect your parents. That's not what I'm saying. Why does the honor go to the parents when the parents bring kids here who are completely unaware and the parents could have all awareness of what's happening around them? Why should I then honor you? You, so in other words, if you, for kids who are born into poverty, let's say in a third world country, like the United States, for kids that are born into poverty, you uh, now have to come here and be grateful that your parents made this decision to have you knowing that they didn't have the means to take care of you, and you should be grateful. Or your parents beat you. They beat you for everything, everything that you do, every human mistake, everything that a child does in the process of learning, they turn it into a physical lesson. And you have to be grateful. You have to, you have to be grateful for your parents. You have to honor them for that. You're born to a woman who was addicted to heroin. And you are addicted to heroin when you're born. And no, if obviously you don't remember it, you just remember all the neurological disorders that you have as a result of your mother being born, being addicted to heroin. That's what you remember. This life that you have now that is a living hell. And you have to honor your parents. I think that's backward. I think if the thinking was you should honor your kids and that was pervasive throughout our society, we would have a better society. We would have less orphanage, orphan, orphans. There would be less need for orphanages. People would probably think before they had children because we would teach with that honor. 
You teach them how to honor kids. What is honor ki- honor- honoring a child? Bringing them into a life that is going to allow them to progress to their highest potential and not have to fight through your adversity in addition to their own. But we're hypocrites. We are. We're hypocrites in so many different ways, which is why our government can lie to us. Other people, our religions can lie to us. Society will lie to you. And we take it. Because we become part of the lie. We, we enjoy the lie. We join in on the lie. Because as many people as there are who are now denouncing Sean Combs, there's that same amount of people who went to his parties, who went to his concerts, who bought his music, who drank his alcohol, who wore his clothing. Now, you might say, what does that have to do with it? Because for years we've heard these rumors. For years we've heard that this was going on. And it didn't stop the majority of people from buying and keeping because otherwise he would not have become a billionaire. We kept lining his pockets. We kept buying the whole sick, twisted fantasy that he was selling. Every music video with scantily clad women popping bottles of champagne. We, we, we devoured it. We couldn't wait to watch the videos over and over again. Clubs, nightclubs that we went to played those videos on big screens while we danced to those tracks. Women imitated the dancers from the video and men imitated the hip hop stars and moguls. We devoured the entire culture. We did. We do. Because, see, these are the people who make culture. And we don't have any litmus test for talent. It's popularity, just like with these elections that are about to happen. It's popularity. We aren't taught to look at things in any critical type of way. That's the last thing that anybody in this country wants is a critical thinker. That's why when they start invading countries... The first people that they round up are the critical thinkers. They round up all the artists. They round up all the scientists. They round up all the philosophers. They round up all the teachers. They round up all the law people. That's who they get rid of first. Anybody who has critical thinking ability. Because they want you to stay right where you believe every fucking thing. Because we believe that we could have that too. We believe we could live like Biggie and Tupac. We believe like that we could be in that type of life like Snoop and all of them. We aspire to it. Many of us did. The lifestyle, even if it was just the, the street thug selling drugs, in some shape, form, or fashion, that music influenced him. He was bumping it in his car. It's part of the culture. And again, there is no litmus test for, for we don't test for talent. We don't make sure these people are talented. If they say right, the right things and they have the right look and they're selling the right image, right beat. listen, we give them our focus, our most valuable resource. We give them our attention. We give them our energy. We give them our assets. We give them our understanding. We join in. And that is how we are complicit. That is how we are complicit. There is no way that all these years, Puffy has been doing what he has been doing for 30 years plus. That is somebody's whole lifetime. Nobody knew all of a sudden. Now the world is just finding out. We've been hearing this bullshit for a long time. And now everybody wants to be outraged in order to self-absolve. So you don't look like that's something that you would do because you still here. And my man, uh, Shahid Bolson, he said, <laughs> he said, it's our, it's your poverty that keeps you from doing it. It's not your, it's not your piety. 
Because if you had that money, you would be doing the same things. You would be on those same jets and on those same yachts doing the same things with the same type of people. Because that is the Western fantasy. That is what they sell us in this, what he called our lottery, our lottery society, our lottery winning society. All of a sudden we want to hit it big and we want to live that lifestyle. Knowing full well the debauchery that it includes. Nobody says, you know what, I don't want to be rich because I might get lured into that lifestyle. I haven't ever heard anybody <laughs> in the history of history. And we have turned our entire focus over to people who don't have talent, who don't care anything about our community. Because if they did, we wouldn't be here. If they cared, I don't care how many scholarships Puffy gave out at Howard. I don't care how many keys to the city he got. If he cared about the community, he would not have been sex trafficking, allegedly, anybody. That does not show care in the community at all. And we do we do that often. Mm -hmm. Particularly, one, an example for anybody here who lives in the Northeast United States. If you have been to New York City, you have walked past homeless people and acted like they were fire hydrants. Mm -hmm. We have driven to intersections where there were panhandlers who had signs saying they were hungry and we acted as, as if they were one of the stoplights. As a society, our civilization sucks. It is not civilized to have people hungry and homeless. We see it every day and we call ourselves civilized. We walk past these people knowing that they are hungry. There are people who work in Manhattan who have seen the same person on the same corner for years. And you might go, well, it's been years. The person could have pulled themselves up by the bootstrap. You haven't been, you probably haven't been to New York City if that's the case. It's not that simple. If it were, everybody would do it. If it were that simple, everybody would do it. There are people who make millions of dollars who walk past people who, who haven't seen a nickel in the last three days. And we call ourselves a civilized society. There are people who sleep on top of sewer grate, on, on top of the, what is it, the subway grate? Because that's where the heat rises from in New York. And it's about to get cold outside, so they find a good grate, where the, a subway grate, because they know that heat is going to be coming, and that's where they sleep. Regardless to the fumes and things, the noxious chemicals that are coming up out of that grate that can kill them, they need to be warm. And we watch this day in and day out and we call ourselves civilized. We know the complicity of our own government going to other countries, killing the dictate, killing the, the powers that be, installing their own military and leadership for, for capitalism's sake, for bananas. Google what the United States did in South America for bananas, for the, those Chiquita bananas that everybody loves. That's a good little rabbit hole for you to go down one day. That was, a couple of years ago. That was many years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was when it came. That was when I found out about it, though. Yeah, we invaded countries and, and took land from people and toppled governments for, banana, for control of the bananas. And we did it in other countries for sugar and we did it for cotton. We did it and we did it and we did it and we did it. We know that our country is that type of complicit that we go into other countries without their knowledge, without our knowledge and without our say so from our own government and do things that are outside of the guidelines of anything that the UN has deemed a viable action. We do it all the time and we know it and we are complicit. We don't make our government stop. We don't bring the government to a screeching halt because they have done this. We don't bring the government to a screeching halt because it has taken reproductive rights away from women. So the government can tell us anything again and again and again because we swallow anything again and again and again. 
And then we want to act like we're upset when we when it finally comes to a head. Everybody was upset that Bill Cosby would uh, what happened when they finally took Bill Cosby to court and prosecuted him for what he had done. There were people all those years who knew exactly what was going on. There were doctors who supplied him with the drugs to get those women into the positions that he did. And you can't tell me that his wife didn't know. We all have our complicity. That's that's not a jab at Camille. She did whatever she thought she needed to do in the moment. She had a whole family to consider. It wasn't just herself. And that's not giving her a way out. I don't live her life. I don't know what it's like to be her. But we can't continue to look at something and not call it what the fuck it is and then get mad when somebody else does. How does that benefit us? <laughs> See, oftentimes we don't re we forget that wealth removes constraints, and that's why many of us want wealth in the first place. We know that wealth is freedom. We just haven't seen how much freedom your wealth can buy. And for a lot of people, it's bought. I mean, you can do your own search on which other celebrities this has happened to, and what they have done to escape it. And you know, again, it's what you call it, Hugh Hefner ran the Playboy Mansion very much the same way that Diddy ran his freak offs. And nobody batted an eye. No, Bill Cosby was a regular at the Playboy Mansion. You mean to tell me Camille didn't know her husband was a regular at the Playboy Mansion when it was written in print? But we want to act like, oh, my God, what happened to, oh, my God, it wasn't a certain thing. That's the part that I want everybody to get. See, it's like this post that I put up earlier. A heart attack doesn't just suddenly happen at 50. It begins with your bad eating habits at 20. It begins when you stop exercising at 30. It begins when a job from your stress catches up with you at 40. It doesn't just happen at 50. That's just the culmination of all the other stuff. And we have to start catching it early. We have it, it's, it, it's, we, we have to get there. We have to get there. Um, we don't, we, they got us so starstruck and this was something that I was wondering, and then my man, Mr. Bolson, said it. The celebrities at the parties were just the party favors. There were other executives at that par at those parties for whom the parties were originally thrown. These are nameless millionaires and billionaires that, that you could walk right by on the street right now. You would never know who these people are. But they have more money and more power than Puffy and Oprah. And they do all these things that these people do. Because again, money removes the constraint. Them how to do it. Yeah, these people, Puff, Puff, Puffy didn't just come up with this idea himself. Mm -hmm. You have to wonder why Quincy Jones is in Indonesia. <laughs> Lit, right. He's not traditional. Not where he is. From what I, from that last I checked, like I and where, unless my, where, where everybody at? Listen, you got to check that out. You got to wonder why they there. Yeah, where everybody at? Hey, check where they at, and if there's extradition, if the United States can just come in there and take, you know, its citizens away for crimes committed here, you have to wonder. Cause that's Puffy went to uh, Quincy House when this all started. He went right to Quincy House. <laughs> But we've known all these types of things since Quincy Jones was doing the Wiz. At least that's when the first that I heard about it. We can't act like we don't know no more. Because then we, we this this fake disgust that we have, it's not even genuine. It's not even genuine. You're just doing it so that you can say, yeah, I, I didn't like what he did. I really want some people to ask yourself, what would you do with that money? How corruptible or incorruptible do you think you are? See, 
we have to get back a hold of our culture and we have given it away to people like Mr. Combs, like the Kardashians, who don't even have a talent. And we have made them billionaires. Mm -hmm. We have. Do you think if the Kardashians weren't fucking niggas, do you think that they would have made all the money that they made? Who do you think they was? They know that the the young black children need somebody to identify with if they go have a show. So they pick our heroes, our sports heroes, and our music heroes, and they make them all look like fools on that show. And their net worth goes up for some reason, and they just marry somebody else. And we keep believing in the fairy tale. What is the fairy tale now? Is it to marry 14 times? Is that the fairy tale? Cause we're not using, we're not, we're not even paying attention. We're not even paying attention. Like the reward that we give these people is undeserved. And we have no idea of the things that are going on behind the scenes. Like I just heard of a term and I was sharing it with my off screen friend yachting have you all heard about this this is basically where model types and celebrities go out on ships with people who are of means and they're their prostitutes out at sea i would have never thought of that unless i had a bunch of money to do it you have to know who you are dealing with and that's something that um, we don't like to admit. It's something that we really don't like to admit. We know exactly who we're dealing with. And it's not just this hip hop culture. It's the people behind the hip hop culture. You have to ask who is the driving force behind all of this. You must ask yourself these questions. This is where critical thinking comes in. And I'm not here to give you my opinion about what I think about it. I'm saying you need to do some research about it so that you can come to an understanding on your own and know that what's playing out in front of you is just part of what's, what's really going on here. Have we, have we really had, a, have we had enough yet? Or are we gonna let them lie to us some more? Because we're about to go into a, a really interesting new season for all of us. Either we're gonna have the first black a woman of color because she's not black. I don't know what she is. She's of color. Either we're gonna have her or we're gonna have this retard again. I think, I personally think there's more qualified candidates in the world, period. But that's just me. Um, ask yourself this question. How disgusted were you when you were dancing to Puffy's music? How disgusted were you when you were watching the Kardashians? How disgusted are you when you hear what the United States has done? One of the most interesting things that I've ever realized, I don't, it was just interesting for me. It, maybe it's not that interesting a fact, but you just for yourself. I was doing some research on the Catholic Church. And when I found out that the Catholic Church used to keep entire brothels on payroll for the priests. Yeah, the entire brothel, sweetheart. I wish I could have just saw her eyes. <laughs> the, the, so your tithes went directly into the coffers of the brothel. Because they kept the brothels in order, like particularly in times of stress, when priests were sent out to do extensive missionary work. I think this was sometime during the Crusades. They had brothels on, on the rolls, on the books, for the priests to go in and out as they please. For the leaders of the church, not just the priests, the, the higher ups, the uh, 
bishops ad infinitum, all those people, to go and have the services of the ladies as much as they wanted to. If, if you think that's crazy, watch the Borgias on Netflix. There's a whole priest, not priest, a pope, who had kids with a prostitute. Not one, not two, but at least three. He became the pope and then got, I think, another woman pregnant. Yeah, the you 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 familiar with this story, right? Yeah, because you know the you know the other part of it. The picture that you often see in churches, uh, the depiction of Jesus Christ, was this Pope's son, Cesare Borgia. You're not seeing a depiction of Jesus if you see that white skinned dude with the long brownish hair. No, that's Cesare Borgia. That's the Pope's son. He had the depiction created while he was the Pope. Uh, he was having an affair with Michelangelo. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was, and he was uh, sleeping with his sister too. So, yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff. You have to look at these people before you listen to these people. And he was sleeping with his sister. And he was sleeping with his sister. You have to look at these people before you listen to these people. That's why there's a whole lot of that going on. Because the things that they are doing right in front of your face are freaking crazy. Like, it's wild. It's, it, it's, it's the wild, wild west. It really is. Um, that's about, yeah, that's really, I'm not going to draw it out too long on that subject. I don't know what it is. I remember, um, being in a program when I was in high school, it was an after school program. We were actors and there was this young lady in the program named Lisa and from what I understand, Lisa's father was like a cop or something. And he had some job that was for him, I guess it was stressful. And I guess his whole life was stressful because he used to beat her, like would make her take a bath and while her skin was still wet, would beat her with an extension cord from what I was, from what I remember. And I didn't know that when she used to attack me all the time, like any opportunity she got to put me down, she would like, with this particular program, we often had to go beg for money, basically, from donors. And because I spoke well, they would take me because I knew the program. I had been, I was one of the people who had been there the longest, and I spoke well. So one day she told me, oh, they always asking you to go. What are you, the white man's pet? Bitch, my check fatter than yours. I don't give a fuck what you think about. Like, what the fuck? Really? You mad because I speak well and you mad because I'm getting more money. I say that to say I had no idea what was going on with her behind the scenes with her father. There's always some shit going on behind the scenes. It is, I know now after studying uh, psychology for four years that oftentimes the manifestation of what you're seeing is just a symptom. There's something bigger, something larger, something else going on. And you have to find out what the fuck that is. That is not. That we also need to apply that when we're looking at our own society. You have to. I think the last thing I just want to say is a lot, a lot of times in our society, we give people accolades and things like that without them ever having to really prove themselves. That's to our detriment. Because when somebody is giving a, given a whole lot of adulation without them earning it, when it comes time for them to take responsibility for their actions, it's going to be hard to get them to do so. They, you have to build that responsibility and the respect for whatever they're doing comes as they build the integrity through the building process of their craft. When, when there's no craft, when it's a popularity contest, you give people undue power. And that's what we've done. 
We've done it often. It is always to our detriment because all the power we give to other groups and other people translates to money. It translates to things that are taken away from your children, from your community, services that aren't available for you because they're going somewhere else, because you have taken your money outside of your community and given it to somebody who doesn't care about you or your community. It's time for us to stop doing that. I don't know what it's going to take. I'm, 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 I'm just hoping that I'm part of what it does take for us to get to the point where we understand that something has to be done and begin to formulate a plan. Because why? People don't take us seriously. And when I say us, I mean specifically black people in America. They don't take us seriously. Nobody does. No, 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 no real group of power in this country takes us seriously. It's because we haven't gotten ourselves to the point where we can be focused about what it is we're asking for. We have let too many years pass where we haven't gotten reparations for the work that our forebearers did. We have let that go by far too fucking long. And yet we still give money to a church. We still give money to religion, not understanding that that is still the same patriarchy that brought us here. It's, it's terrifying when you begin to understand that all these are systems that are put in place. To, it's really eerily like that Matrix movie. All of these are systems put in place to control you. Every single last one of them. And when I hear people argue in favor of God and religion and you just don't know Jesus and th 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 and all the rest of that hot mm -hmm. shit, you know, it wears me out because it, what it, the first thing it tells me is that you haven't done any research. If you spent, you don't even have to spend years researching this shit. That's what's crazy. You can sit down in an afternoon and become completely disgusted with Christianity, Islam, Judaism. It doesn't take very long. Google has done it for you. It has compiled all of the information and statistics that you will ever need to know that these systems are put in place to get your money and keep you working and keep you from realizing your actual power. We allow it. We allow it when we when we succumb to the information about these stars who don't know us. Like when people post happy birthday, Beyonce, nigga, you live on 19th street. Shut the fuck up. Like, are you, are you kidding me? Like, is Beyonce going to see this and go, oh, you know what? I'm so glad he reached out. We have to stop that. We don't understand that that's our energy and our focus that we're giving away to people who don't even give a fuck. Who couldn't care less. Do you think Beyonce is waiting for you going? I hope he texts me for my birthday. We give our focus away. We give our attention away frivolously. We don't pay attention. We don't even give ourselves the critical thinking skills because we have been taught that it's a curse. We have been taught that if we ask too many questions that we are disobedient to a God that doesn't exist. I'm not saying God doesn't exist. I'm saying the one that you have been taught doesn't. The God on the cross. Remember that? <laughs> But yeah, you wait for him to come back. If you kill me and I come back, you better goddamn it kill me again. You better kill me again. Because I'm not coming back. For nobody. For nothing. I'm done. After that. Yeah. I'll be the same. Yeah. So, start using your critical thinking skills. If there's anything I want you to get from this, because I know I went over a whole bunch of things. Mr. Bolson, Dr. Bolson, I believe. I'm not sure. But um, if he's not a doctor, then Mr. Bolson went over a variety of things. And it just reminded me that, you know, we are very performative in our criticism when it comes to things. We only do it once it's popular and everybody else is on board. And once it's died down, we don't really have much to say because we didn't invest enough in the situation in the first place. We just wanted to jump onto the bandwagon and we shouldn't have even been over there because it really has nothing to do with us. But we wanted to be part of the popular opinion that everybody else is. And we wanted to throw our two cents in there so that we could feel like we're a part of. And now we have given our energy over to this entity that once again has nothing to do with us. Stop it. It's silly. We can do better. I'm not saying don't 
indulge a guilty pleasure every now and then just for the sake of, you know, whatever. What I'm saying is don't give your focus and attention. If it costs you something, you should stop. So with that, I think I, I think I've said about all I, I, I want to say. I, I implore anybody if there is a belief that you have. Well, I remember one day, the day that I I was sat online and I was curious about Christmas, like the tradition of Christmas. So I googled it. That was an afternoon well spent. Um, and the things that I found out were very much against what I thought all these years. Like I thought Christmas has always been celebrated. It was a long time tradition. And to find out that even in this country, it was less than 200 years old and that it was actually a pagan holiday. And it was at one time outlawed. And that if the if it was like just the amount of what the fuck that I found out. And then so I was curious about, you know, the popular icons in Christmas and like where did all of that crap come from? And it the whole Santa Claus with the red and white suit came from Coca Cola. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Coca Cola decided I had did a uh, uh, what do you call it a survey. They found out that people weren't really drinking Coca Cola as much in the winter as they were in the summer. So they were trying to find a marketing idea to get more people to drink it during the winter, and they came up with the fat guy in the red suit, and they prop they. Uh, took an old saint that had been decommissioned or was about to be decommissioned, St. Nicholas. That's where you get St. Nick, the old white guy in the fat suit. That's where you get that from. They used that whole moniker and stuck that to that. And that's how you get Coca-Cola, which has the red and white and Santa Claus in his red and white suit. Ain't that a bitch? And then Zales jumped in. The whole the beers family with the diamonds and things like that. They decided they were going to colonize it. Valentine's Day. And they also jumped in on Christmas because they started with the Christmas rings and the diamonds and the promise things. Yeah, all of that is marketing. We look at it in the popular culture like it's something that we have to abide by. And all the rest of this, but it's a whole bunch of bullshit that we want to make it possible. Some shit that will probably kill. So, again, yeah, with that, I say I am in a. Excuse me. I think I have talked enough. Like the video and make sure you.